supposed to minister today, and I'm feeling in for him. We have a dedication today. Um, Paul and Tanya, in a little bit, are going to come up. Paul and Tanya Nolan, would you stand up, brother and sister? They are here today to dedicate their child to the Lord, giving him thanks for all that God has given to them. This family, I want you to know, is a miracle from God. Their union, their child, everything that Tanya has wanted, she had to fight for, and that's what we're going to talk about today, fight the good fight of faith. Give them a hand this morning. If you have a son or a daughter that you want to dedicate back to the Lord, we want to open our doors to you. We normally do it the first Sunday of each month, which we call Jubilee Sunday, but because of New Year's fell on the first Sunday, we wanted to give them an opportunity for their family to be here because everybody was everywhere at every <laughs> end of time. So we were just happy to do that for them today. But if you have a baby that you would like to um, get, have dedicated, we would honor, be honored to do that for you and for the glory of God. If you would, I know we're standing a lot, but I just want to do this this morning. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. It's a very, very familiar verses of scripture, <laughs> and we're going to take a few minutes to bring forth the word of God. And if you would stand with me for the reading of God's word, I'd appreciate that because I believe we need to honor the word of the Lord. This is the logos of God's word. The Bible declares that. There's 66 books in this Bible, and they speak of a person called the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. And when we open this up, we open up the bread of life. So we need to be as tenant to that which we are about to read, knowing that it is the very word of God, trying to reveal himself to his people as we read. We're going to read together verse 10. If we have our Bibles, if not, it's going to be on the overhead if it's there. Okay, great, it's there. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto yourself the the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the, uh, the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I'm going to stop there. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word, for it gives us divine truth and revelation and insight into that which you have established through Jesus Christ himself. God, I pray today that we understand what opportunity is before us in this new year in this new season of time, that we can take all that you have for us and apply it to our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, I'm moving a little quick today because I believe the Lord wants to prophetically speak into your hearts, into, into your hearts, into your minds, that you may understand what God is doing. This is a new day. We talked about the first of the year that this is a new day. Day. just God is doing something new and we understand it's been through the traditions of that which he established in Christ Jesus but you when God gives you and I something when he give anybody land or possessions after he get it they had to obtain it or they had to uh, pursue it and take it see the Bible says the violent must take it by forth and what that means is Sometimes we, the enemy doesn't want to let go what belongs to you and what belongs to me. So we have to take a hold of the God's word and take a hold of what God has given us sometimes by force. And so when we talk about the good fight of faith, this is not a physical fight because we read we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to understand that. This fight is a spiritual fight. So God is saying, put on the armor. See, Saul tried to give David his armor, and it just didn't work for him. If you study the, the book uh, uh, where he was talking about defeating Goliath was, was the giant, because God has been exercising his prophet, his man, his king, 
uh, that he had anointed to be king in the back of the desert when he fought the bear and the lion. He killed them with a slingshot in his head. And so that was a spiritual symbol that God was going to use something that didn't make sense in the natural realm. So when we talk about putting the armor of God on, who do you think's who armor it is? It's God's armor. So when we study these things, we'll, we'll look at a man that has all this armor on and all this stuff on, and, and we try to act like that's a symbol of the armor. But no, God's armor is different. This is the armor of the Lord. This is not Saul's armor. This is not man's armor. This is God's armor, and God is telling us as New Testament believers to put his armor on because his armor is the only armor that has been proven against time. Someone say, his armor is the only armor has been proven against time. So we have to put on God. That's what we're doing when we put on his armor. And we say, it don't fit, but it, it, he will cause you to be molded and made again in his image. So the armor of God will fit everybody. Because he brings you to the full stature of faith. Because faith is the tool that pleases God. So when you have pleased him, or you come to the place of transition, you're able to get in under the armor of God. Someone say it's God's armor. See, that simple bit of truth, most people hasn't really tuck a hold of God's armor and looked at it as it being God's armor. And I know you could testify to that, but this is God's armor when he tells you to put on the armor of God. Well, what is the armor of God? We talked about the armor of God, the shield of faith. Faith will shield you from the darts, the fiery darts of the enemy. Has anybody went through something and it seems like accusation after accusation and, and, and people would gossip and people will do this? The enemy uses people to throw these fiery darts they call from the enemy. So if you don't know what fiery darts is like, if you ever watched a good movie where they put tar on a dart and they would ignite it and make it fire. So it wouldn't just burn through the air, but when it hit you, that tar would splatter on you and it would burn all over your body. Because the enemy's not playing. He's playing to keep you, to kill you, to, to destroy you. He doesn't like you. Why? Because you've got the armor of God on. You have come against the nature of the kingdom of darkness and you're implementing and putting on the kingdom of righteousness, of truth. And you're placing the armor of God on your body as you study, as you seek him. And God is telling us in this day that I have done a new thing and I'm about to show off in an outrageous way. There is things that you must understand that you have to face. Remember, Scott, if you was here Wednesday, you, Wednesday night, you heard Scott talks about many doors or, or there's many adversaries at the doors, at the entry points that, that God gives you. I call them portals. There is portal. See, in the book of Job, I've got to say this to establish what I just said with portals. And the God asked Job, what were you doing? He said, I was going here and there. What he was doing, he was studying these portals. He was studying that which God has established for man to demonstrate the power of God through. And he was going. Has anybody watched a good movie where they had this big ancient wheel and then it was like it looked like a water and it would go like this and people would walk into it and they go from one dimension to another has anybody watched that movie what's it called stargate and you go through a stargate this is similar to what i want you to get a picture of it you walk in from one dimension into another dimension the acceleration of god's word takes you from one dimension to another and makes you something that you couldn't be on your own you're not just a man but you're a man of god you're not just a woman but you're a woman of god you're not just talking but you're talking with authority of god why because god is taking you from one location to another and one stance from one place to another and causes you to sit where he is in heavenly places. So that's a place of authority. So as we put on the armor of God, we have to understand there is something to possess. They possess geographical location. Back in the day, they would fight with spears and shields, slingshots or whatever else. But we fight through the word of faith. So we have to put on God's word. We have to put salvation on us. We have to settle the issue that we're saved not by works, but by faith in that which Jesus Christ has established. So we need to adjust that and put that helmet of salvation on. See, this is the armor of God. God wants to gird your mind and give you understanding. There's nothing good, bad, ugly, 
or anything you could do to deserve it. He had, it's a gift. All you can do is receive it. Some, someone say, I receive salvation today through the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. I am saved to the uttermost. Someone say, I'm saved to the uttermost. If I'm not saved, all I got to do is believe in my heart, confess it in my mouth, and then I am transformed into another thing because Jesus Christ has grace and graced me with his love and his blood and his mercy and he's covered you and he's covered me and he's called us his sons and his daughters and now I place the helmet of salvation on turn to your neighbor and say I am saved turn to him and say I'm redeemed I am blood bought I am a child of God I'm putting my helmet on this is my helmet of salvation Mm, say, you can't touch this because I'm bad to the bone. Someone say, I am bad with Jesus because Jesus has saved me and made me in his image and likeness all over again. Come on, put your hands together and clap and give God. I want to thank Larry. I want to stop for a minute and take a, a, an opportunity to take a commercial break. Larry, would you stand? And let's give honor to him and the praise and worship of Dominion Praise. He filled in for Scott at the call. He did an outstanding job. Give honor. We're honored to love you. Appreciate you. Laney, Joe, everybody. Outstanding, you know. Thank God we have people that can fill in when we can't be here. Isn't that right? And so we got to give honor where honors do. I apologize for not doing that earlier. <clears throat> so we're putting on not a piece of the armor of God, but we're putting on the whole armor of God. Someone say, whose armor is it? Someone say, it's God's armor. Not Saul's armor. It's God's armor. So this is the armor that God himself wore. This is what Jesus wore when he walked on the Sea of Galilee. This is what Jesus wore. You couldn't see it because it's a spiritual armor. See, people can't see with the natural eye that you put on the helmet of salvation, but you're saved because Satan can see it. He's in the spirit realm, and he hates you and targets you, and he tries to get you to deny the fact that you are saved. But you have to, be, you have to understand that it's not by anything you did or anything you didn't do. All you can do is receive it. Amen. We got that down? So someone say again, I am saved. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but mighty with God, with the pulling down strongholds. See, the, what we, when you get saved, it's not a one-time fix, even though it, the blood of the Lamb is. It's saying, I'm being saved. I'm being renewed. I'm being restored. Because that's why, listen to me, because that's why we got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. This is one place in the Word of God that says, put on the mind of Christ. So the mind that you and I have has been defective from the fall. Now we have to be renewed. We're in the spirit of our mind. How many understands we have to be renewed here? Even though I'm saved and I've got that helmet on, I have to be renewed because the enemy will try to get me to act like I used to live, but no longer will I act like that. I will come out from amongst the world. And what does that mean? I, when I was a young Christian, I used to think, man, that sounds crazy. Who could understand the word of God? He says, one minute Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. One minute he says, come out from amongst the world. But what he was saying is, there's two dimensions. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God. That's why John preached the, the, the kingdom of God and Christ preached the kingdom of God. There's no other gospel but the kingdom of God that's preached. And so they preached the kingdom of God and it, John said, it's near you. And Jesus said it has come because John was foretelling the story, but Jesus was fulfilling the story. And so he said it's come, and Jesus fulfilled every bit of it through, through the obedience of his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. So because of that, for a believer, we can have the mind of God, and we can come out from the old man's thinking and put on the new man, which is Jehovah God. How do we put on the new man? We put on the new man by studying the word of God. We look for him. And truth has come. When truth comes, it sets us free from a lower perception or thinking of a man or a woman that barely gets by. I want to say something that's very arrogant sounding. Let me go over this way. They look mean on that side. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm teasing. It was in my notes. No, I'm teasing. I am the same thing he is. Because Jesus said this, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now that I'm born again, I'm born of, 
I've been begotten of the word and born of the spirit. I am righteous as he is righteous. So when you see me, you see Christ. When someone sees you now, they see, for a believer, for a born to be believer, they see Christ, which is the hope of glory. God wants Christ to reign in your life, and he wants you to have his everything, everything that he's provided. And it's by putting on the armor of God. So we talked about the helmet, we talked about the shield, but there is a sword. The sword, it's a two-edged sword because it slices in and slices out. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword that man could make. And he was using that because this is not like man's ability. This is supernatural. So he is a discerner. What that means is the Holy Spirit is a discerner of the thoughts, intents of your heart. So he's, e he's able to go into the joint and marrow of your body. How many knows your blood? That's where all the supply comes from, the joint and marrow of your body. So Jesus, by the word or the sword, is able to discern past everything that you are. He can go into your generations, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm like grandma, grandpa, gra you know, someone says, I, I'm an alcoholic because great, 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 grandpa. It's in the DNA, it is. They've proven that scientifically to be so. And so what we have to do is we have to get a hold of the word and see what God says about it. No, God says, I'm free, so now I can be transformed and have the freedom. I can sever, listen to me, I can sever by the word of the Spirit, by the sword of God, I can sever the curse that has been attached to my DNA, and now I can take on the DNA of Jesus with the shed blood that gives me life. He became the curse that I might and you might become the righteousness of God. Turn to your neighbor and says, I'm righteous. I'm the righteousness of God. So the curse is broken. The curse of God is broken. Hear me. It's broken through the word of God. And because he become a curse on Calvary's cross, cursed is every man that hangs upon the cross. That's what the Bible says. So he took on our nature and he gave us his nature. Now we have the nature of Jesus Christ. So what is Jesus doing with the armor of God? Jesus is doing everything you read about him doing. He's opening the eyes of the blind. He's casting out devils. Listen, he's raising the dead. He's walking in the spirit. We talk about Romans 10, I believe 8. He said, let me just go there real quick. You stay where you are. So I, can't, I want to make sure I quote it right. Romans chapter 8. Let me see. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. Not after the nature of this old man, but walking in the newness of the word of God. God has revealed himself. Now I put on him and I walk him out through my life. So God wants us to understand when we put on the whole armor of God, we have perfect precision, um, um, excellence, if I can use any other good word like that, to be able to do what God has established through Jesus Christ in our lives. So I can, Jesus walked on water. I've done it many times. Have you? When it freezes out there, I walk under water. Ice pond. But, but he, <laughs> he was walking in the midst of a storm. And Peter's like, me, can I come out there where you are? If it's you, Lord, bid me to come. He said, come. So he walked out there on real water. And then he started looking at the storm. And he got his eyes off of God through faith, and he began to sink. So faith is one of the armor and attributes of God. God's saying, walk in faith. Believe me, trust me. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you, even if you make your bell bed in a hellish place. He said in hell. But a hellish place, what does that mean? If I, I've just forgotten about God and forsaken, there's nothing to this, and I'm just going, I'm going to make up for everything. I've, I've prayed in counsel for many people that have gotten saved. And gone through some difficult times and said, forget it. I can't do this. My wife is crazy. My husband's crazy. My kids have lost their mind. I'm just going to party. And what they do is they end up making up for all the lost time. You know what I'm saying? They drink more than ever. They smoke more than ever. They, they shoot more than ever. And they just make, the enemy just says, well, just make up for it. How many of those I'm telling the truth? And they just make up for lost time. And so, but then they come to another season in their life because of the word is in them and the word is keeping them and won't let them take their life. The word will bring them back to a place where he can renew them and restore them and heal them and love them and nurture them 
again. Why? Because God said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. God said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I don't care if you make your bed in a place of hell. I don't care if you wake up in a crack house, everybody's gone, you don't know where the heat is, it's freezing. I've worked in places in Detroit where we, every morning we'd have to run out people. It was wintertime. They'd either be prostitutes, this is the truth, shooting, having arrow and needles in their arms still. Because we were there on a project, a government project, and we couldn't allow it. So every morning we didn't know what to expect. But I prayed for them. I wasn't even a preacher yet. I was just a kid. My dad was a preacher. I knew that they needed God. I didn't just, I said, Jesus loves you. There'd be some women in there in their own feces. Listen to me. In such a stupor, they were in their own feces laying in the floor. Didn't even know it out of their mind. This is the enemy's plan for your life. That's why God said, come out from amongst the world. He says, I got a better plan for you. I love you. See, it's no, you don't have to quit anything to serve God. You just have to receive God. It's a gift. God's going to show himself and love him and, and cherish you and show you he's going to be there for you. You know, seven times 70 a day. Do you have that much patience and love for somebody? Everyone look at me. See, if we're supposed to be like him and illuminate and, and be the image and likeness of God, we're supposed to have this kind of, we're supposed to have this kind of character about us. Or I told you she was going to end up like that. I told you he was going to end up like that. I told you, I told you, you need to tell something different. You need to speak something different. A lot of people, are, you know, they don't like the faith movement, but I got something to say. You are not saved if you don't like the faith movement because you had to believe in your heart and you had to confess with your mouth. That's the faith movement. And from that day forward, you still have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. This is a faith movement of God. So we're going to call those things that be not on that person. You are blessed of the Lord. You are healed of the Lord. You're the daughter of the Most High. I said you're the head and not the tail. I begin to prophesy and begin to speak to them life, not death. They know where they were. They knew they were in a death. We got to speak the word of God and bring them out of a dead place. We got to declare and decree the promises of God's word over men and women. This is the generation. There's so many people on heroin right now. What do we do? We kick them out? No, we embrace them and love them and let the power of God's love overwhelm them to cause them to take what's in their hand and say, I want that. See, we don't condemn them. We show them something greater than they have. And once we show them the greater one, they'll let go what's in their hand and they'll take a hold of his hand. It'd be in an old song. It was an old story. Front song, put your hand in the hand of the man that steered the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man that calmed the sea. They put their hands out of the hands of the enemy into the arms and the hands of their Savior. And Jesus, in a moment time, will turn them around and cause a miracle to transpire and take some through that portal from one position into another position. They're saved, they're healed, they're delivered, they're set free. Because of the power and the anointing of Jehovah God. And that's what we have to put on the armor of God. That we're not just sounding brass and tingling cymbal. We need the power. We need the anointing. We need the authority of God. When we speak, all heaven needs to get behind our words and say, thus says the Lord. And that will transpire into the things that God is trying to get through you to someone as you become their present help in time of need. Jesus is looking for someone to use to be a vessel of somebody's present help in time of need. This world is hurting. This world is bleeding. The best of the best of this world, and I say it quite often, the, the, most, the smartest men and women of this world, all they can offer the people that are afraid right now is Play-Doh and a coloring book and a dog. Now, I'm not making fun of that, but we have the answer to their problem. We have the, we have the answer to their fears. And perfect love. The Bible says perfect love. When you have the manifestation of the perfectness of, of God's love, it will cast out fear. It is a spirit, the spirit of a devil and oppression and death is upon a generation that don't know God. Here in America with all the television, all the internet, all the radio, and all the message of all the preachers around the world are not reaching a whole generation. Here in America, they don't know what to do but play with Play-Doh and color with crayons and pet a dog. Ain't nothing wrong with a dog. There's nothing wrong with coloring books. My grandgirls, daughters come over, I color with them. I'll play, I'll play with Play-Doh with Jackson. 
I'll get in the floor and play just like him. I'll show him how to really play with it. Make up some ideas he'd never seen before. Mom said, would you learn that from? I said, Papa Dave. <laughs> Tell him Papa Dave. <laughs> That's his other Papa. Put the guilt and blame on him. <laughs> I'm sure he does the same. <laughs> But, this, but I, we got to be real. We've got to know that this generation needs God. But we have to do something. We have to put the whole armor of God on that we may be able to withstand. Because the enemy is target you. Withstand against the wiles of the devil. The devil seeking who he may devour. And the enemy's going around trying to devour up men and women of God. And God is trying to get us clothed with the armor of God that we can be the example of God and walk as men and women with authority and power. You like this, don't you, Delena? She's proud of her pastor today. I pick up thoughts a lot of times. I'm sorry. Let me drink for that one. So we are in, and I'm going to close with this statement. We have been presented with the greatest opportunity. Would you please come to the piano? Known to man in this new year. There's so many people have an opinion on this last election, and I don't want to get politically correct with anybody. But I have to make this statement because it's been a transfer of through the prayers of the saints. There's been a spiritual warfare taking place. The heavens that were brassy are now open over America again. Can God use people? That's who he uses as people. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, above all of that, you've got to know that you're a child of God first and foremost. We cannot let this political generation separate us because that's the, uh, that's the tool of the enemy. Because the enemy knows if he can separate us, everyone look at me. If he can separate us as believers, he can get into our lives and into our families and tear us apart. But there is an anointing with corporate unity that the enemy has no influence over. It's called the body of Christ. And above African American, I'm Indian, Chinese, whatever nationality you are, it doesn't matter. We are joined together by the one blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross. And it supersedes racial barriers causes us to be one in Christ Jesus. This is the heart cry. When I seen the man that has been elected to be president come down the escalator, I was sitting there in my family room not thinking anything about it. I never watched elections much. I voted, but I just did it half-heartedly. But the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and I called out to Renee. She can vouch for this. And the Spirit of the Lord said, that's the next president of the United States of America. Against all odds, who would have thought? But God has something that pl he placed upon him that we need. You may not can see it now. But God has something on his life that we need. And after he showed me that this was the next president, I said, he said this three things to me. He says, I'm taking back the White House. This is what the Spirit of the Lord said. I didn't know nothing about politics. He says, I'm taking back the schoolhouse. And he says, I'm taking back my house. There would have been a cry from many people that prophesied that one other person would make it. But let me tell you how prophecies work. If you get your emotions mixed up with it, you can miss prophecy. Doesn't mean they're not a prophet. It means their emotions got mixed up with it and they couldn't see clearly. I wasn't even thinking about it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this is. And this is what's going to take place, these three things. And I believe with all my heart that we have been handed an opportunity in America once again. 
Whether you like them or not, there's some things I don't like about them. But there's some things I like about them. And, but whether you like them or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is God is still in control. And God knows what we need more than we know ourselves sometimes. And so I'm saying if we will allow God to move in our house, in our house, the house of God, he will show us there's about to come like the world has never seen. Now you hear me, and I'm there recording all of this. There's about to be so much finances, and I said this a year ago through all the transition of this when I thought, well, boy, I missed it many, many times. I thought, well, I missed it. I, I didn't see clearly. There is a financial release that's coming to America that America has never seen before, not because of the man, but because of the, the anointing of Jesus Christ that's upon this country. Finances is coming to America like we've never seen. There's money, and I've, every time I've talked to Wendy and every time I give a prophetic word or a word of knowledge to anyone concerning finances, when the days go by and they will get stuff, Carol is proof, Wendy is proof, many people are here in proof, and God would release to them finances that they didn't even know it was theirs. There is money coming to you that you don't even know that's yours, and it's going to be released, stand up, son. There's coming money to you that you didn't even know about. And you're going to say, man, because there's a third generation that had did some things for your family that has been in the history books that has been unknown. But God, listen to me, God said he's going to show them and they're going to owe you not thousands but millions of dollars. And your whole life is going to change. And it will go from your father to you somehow. And it bypasses him to you because of the way this thing is laid out. And God says, get ready for millions. Raise your hands. This is an anointing a favor that that's coming upon you, I release to you now the favor of God that gives you the wealth for this time, for such a time as this. Take it not lightly, says the Lord, and don't have to feel or think because when God does transition, it's done secretly in the spirit and you don't even know about it. But when it comes about, I want you to testify that God is a God that man shall not lie, but God is a God of truth. Come on, give the Lord a hand up. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. I release it to you now in Jesus' name. There is finances coming to the kingdom of God. Hear me, some of the richest people in the world are going to have ideas and give, listen, and going to give it to the church. Multi-billionaires are going to give these ideas to the church, and the church is going to be stronger than ever before. God says, I'm doing a new thing. Get ready. But put on. How do you get ready? Because God gives it. You put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the enemies that don't want to let go of that. But when you address yourself with the armor of God, you have power and authority to go through the portal that will take you from one position to another position in a moment of time. It's called the spirit of acceleration will come upon the word of God in your life. Stand to your feet in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask all the young people from the balcony to come down, please. Larry, would you come and put words to the lyrics? Faith pleases God. Take a hold of this prophetic word that's come to us today. Through faith, put a demand on what God has said. Healing, deliverance. Listen, above oh, all that God is going to do, there is a great revival beginning. Your sons and your daughters, come across here. Your sons and your daughters, I come here, young people, that fills in the church down there. Would you guys come over here, too? Chris, I'd like for you and your family to come, too, Open as a covering. My heart, Lord. There's a great, Open overwhelming salvation coming to your house. They're coming from the south, the north, the east, and the west. That's what this new thing is all about. God says, I'm calling to the deep things. The deep is calling. The deep of the kingdom of God is calling to the kingdom of darkness. He says, my sons and my daughters are coming home. Those that have been out, those that have been addicted, those that have been in a place of death and prison doors, not only physical but spiritual, are being opened in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's about to do a new thing in our lives. If we will be clothed with the armor of God, 
will we be the vessels of God that uses it, Alyssa? Lift it up. Sing it. Shining in the light of your glory. You and Chris. Sean, come up here, sir. Pour out your anoint these power kids. And, love. and Sean, you guys anoint it's these kids. Sing holy, 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 holy. Has anybody holy, know what the tsunami is? There was things holy, in a deep place holy, holy, came out of a deep place of the ocean, and it went on land. Scientists see fish they've never seen before, weird-looking stuff. You're going to see some weird-looking stuff come into the kingdom. Some polka-dotted stuff, some striped stuff, some shaved stuff, some tattoo stuff, some stuff that don't look like it's supposed to look like you're used to. But you got to make room for that stuff because God said the deep of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God is calling to the deep. And he says, I'm about to bring up some unusual things. I want every person to stretch your hands towards these teenagers right now. And let's pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and we declare your word to be over these people that are standing here before us. We pray, God, that the salvation and the grace and the mercy of God cover them and keep them and save them, God. Raise them up to be men and women of God. Let this be the new movement. God, let us be a mighty voice to be reckoned with, God. Raise up prophets and prophetess. God, raise up teachers and apostles and evangelists, God. Raise them up for the glory of the kingdom. Pastors, Father, raise them up, God. We speak life to them and we cause them to come forth in the name of Christ Jesus. We declare, we decree the promises of your word upon these children. It's in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. I want the pastors to come and hug their necks. Women and men, Doreen, would you fill in for Sharon? And would you come, Cheryl, uh, Carol, and hug them? I want to see you. I want to see you. <clears throat> Glory to God. Open the eyes of my heart. See, the eyes of your understanding is what they're talking about. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. See, when you talk about the eyes of your understanding, it says, take this logos that is written. And give me revelation insight that I can be transformed, renewed, like you, in your image, in your likeness, to do the things that you've done and the things that you're doing. Hallelujah. Is this, I don't know who you are. Have you ever been here before? Is this your mother? Is that your sister? Sister? That's your daughter. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord has led me to you all service. And I've avoided it. But I want you to know that God has seen everything that you've walked through. And he says, you've not been alone. He says, I'm with you. And I'm going to work it out for you, for your benefit. No matter what's been said at you, God said, every accusation is being canceled off of you. And I'm writing a new name upon you. And he says, those things that have tried to put you in a box and make you feel no good at all. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Come here. Can I pray with you? The Spirit of the Lord is all over her. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Come here, Renee, please. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to For see For the Lord, I want you to hug her because the Lord says, I've kept you in my arms. I want and I've sheltered you with the shield of faith. But you got to put the armor, oh, the whole armor of God on. And know that he's with you and he's never forsaken you. No matter how hard it hurts, God said, I'm healing that scar right now. And I'm taking away the reproach. And oh, there it is. And I release to you the anointing of healing and gladness. She's going to be happy again. And she shall know the voice of the Lord and she will never follow Open any other strange voice. And she'll never listen. You'll never be deceived again. You'll, there's a bit of deception. God said, I break that off of you in the name of Jehovah God. 
and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free today. In the name of, oh, by God. Thank you, Jesus. Let God use your name. Come on. Come on, everyone, sing it, sing it, sing it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Help me to perceive. I want to see. I want to see you. you. I want to see you. Listen in Mark, St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 13, 14, and 15, and 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall enter in or therein. And he took them up in his arms, Jesus, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Jesus said, suffer the little children. Paul, you and Tanya, while the Spirit of the Lord is moving, bring this little baby to me. I want you two to come first. Renee, where are you at? So think about this. Jesus took time out of his busy schedule, and he had a busy one because he was walking in the rhythm of God's word and promise. And his disciples didn't want him to be troubled. He said, no, no, let them come for such is the kingdom of God. Renee's going to read the name of this baby girl with the red dress on. (laughs) Paul and Tanya, Brother Paul and Tanya Nolan, has brought here today such a gift from God. Their whole life is a miracle. The, The obstacle that she had to find the promise and fulfill the promise is here. Oh, God. She couldn't see it. But she kept putting the armor of God on. And God kept on encouraging her. And she kept walking it out. And then all of a sudden, this happened. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, this happened. Renee? Aubrey Marie Nolan. Aubrey. Come here, sit, Pastor Renee. (laughs) She likes daddy, doesn't she? Here's what we're going to do for her sake. (laughs) Look at that pretty girl. You're pretty, Aubrey. Would you stretch your hands here? Renee, come on the side of them. We're going to cover them. Would you help me pray? Father, we dedicate Aubrey to you. You're the giver of all they have. And they acknowledge it, so they're here today to say, Lord, we dedicate to you because we are limited in our covering because we can only do so much, but we know that you can go beyond all our means. We dedicate their relationship today. We ask God that your blessing be upon this house and upon this child. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we dedicate you, Aubrey. And we say you are blessed. You are blessed and favored of God. I'm going to ask the whole family to come up here. I want you all to stand behind the podium. We got another one that's got to be dedicated. Boy, babies are having people having babies around this house. Love you, sis. God bless you. God's with you. You seen God today, didn't you? Oh, look at that hair. I don't know if I know these folks. Come here, baby girl. Where are you at, Renee? I want their family to introduce themselves to the congregation. Who's got the whole handheld mic right here? It is. Thank you. What's your name? Matt Welsh. And this is? Heather. And you are? What are you are to them? Paul's your daddy? Paul, you go boy. 
I don't know this lady. What's your name? Um, Felicia. Felicia. No, it's Erica. <laughs> What's this one's Erica's name? Look at that hair. My God. What's your name? Lyric. Lyric. And this one? Raphael. Raphael. Who, this is a new one. Oh, what's her name? Ellie. Ellie. Oh, she's beautiful. One of each. That's awesome. Veronica. Veronica. How you Aunt doing, Veronica. Baby? Aunt Veronica. <laughs> yep. And your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Good to meet you. Yes, yes handsome. Mariah, care. I mean, Mariah. <laughs> this is your baby. Yep. Wow. We're going to have to do that to him real soon here. Who's Grandma Mimsy? Mimsy. Grandma. Grandpa. And Paul. <laughs> Listen, every one of you, and you all know this, play a part in this little beautiful's life. And when Paul and Tanya's not around them, when you can see the love they have for this baby, every one of you have to represent God for her. So the very best can be for her life. And it even, even and you, when you gr he grows up, you train him to be a little brother to her. And to cover her and protect her from all the bullies. All the people that take advantage of her. This is what we got to do. And you got to guard this little thing. This is my little girl. I hope you got married right. Okay, I like that. Yes, sir. Take care of her. She's a jewel. I know you know that. And good to see you, sis. And you know, the, you, know the, you know the protocol because you're men and women of God. You're still praise and worship leaders over at that church. Awesome. Look at this guy. What does he play yet? Come on. Everything? He's got enough hair to be anything. My God, it's thick. I used to have hair like that. You don't believe it, but I did. And who's this little guy? Carter. He's a good-looking boy, and this one is too. So every one of you have a part to play in her life. And we're being gracious to her because I usually would take them and make them cry, but she's big enough to hit me. <laughs> and we dedicate this family. Would you stretch your hands toward this family? We're going to ask God's protection and blessing upon all of them. Because of this little girl here today, they're all represented here. And we're so honored to be a part of this great day. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, we thank you for each and every one of these people that are here. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the dedication of this baby to you. And not only this baby, but all these babies in this family. We give them to you to protect them. Let the angels go and camp in around them and keep them all the days of their life. God, that they may see the goodness and the mercy and the grace of your love for them. As we all are family of God, we love each other and we love you. And we declare and decree the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ looks upon this day to say, I have grace and mercy for my children. For you are my children of the Most High and my hands upon you. And I haven't forgotten the promises that I've made to you. And I shall call you forth and you shall do the great works of God. And God said, I'm bringing you two to another level through this finances, and you know, you'll know, listen to me, take it not lightly, you'll know what to do when God gives it to you, because God's placed things on your heart in regards to the kingdom, and God anoints you with that favor now, and Father, upon this family as well, we ask God that the grace and the love of God will continue to be with them all the days of their life. We just ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. and everyone said, Amen. come on then, give them a good bad grace you. I love you. Mm. Love you, Paul. Let me give a kiss for you, buddy. <laughs> One more time. Let them know you love it as you guys just dismiss. <laughs> okay. As they're walking down, real quick, everybody stand with me as we're dismissed. For the real Christians, <laughs> Ruthie does, or Ruby. Okay, get my Ruby. I do. I didn't want to do this. But Obey God, honey. Last night while I was praying, the Lord spoke to me, and he wanted me to give it. And I thought, well, maybe a, <laughs> maybe a Passover, but he was telling me to tell the people of the church to be prepared for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's right. The Lord is getting ready to do Confirmation. something. He's getting ready to do something. A lot of things that we haven't seen as yet.
Yes. But he's getting ready to pour out his spirit in a mighty way upon the people of God. Get and ready. I, Get ready. I received that. Thank you. That's a wonderful word. That's a confirmation and it's a real word. Listen, I want to talk to all the real Christians that wants a deeper walk with God and to get ready. I'm going to invite you to East Campus tonight at 630 where God's power and anointing is going to be elevated because we're in a new day. Anything can happen. You don't want to miss a service because anything, creative miracles, signs, wonders, and creative miracles are going to happen. I encourage you to be there tonight and allow God to bless you.